everything you need to know about products and services that can improve your life. This is Experts on Call on CL 650. You're listening to Strata Life on Sale 650 today. George Gordon and joining me, Dan O'Hearn from Key Pacific Property Management, Dan Schmidt from Remdahl Painting and Restoration, and Ali Mohammed of Paramount Financial Services. And we're talking about projects that need to be done in Strata, the cost, planning for it, who pays for it, who finances it. And uh, we were talking just uh, before we went on air about, you know, getting the getting the whole ball rolling uh, does financing for a major project require a resolution from the owners ellie right so typically a lender will issue a borrowing resolution the template wording and every lender has their own wording so what we do is we give a strata corporation a sample of that so they can deal with that via their lawyers and eventually that wording will have to be agreed upon and signed for any financing structure. So that is part and parcel of any project that is externally financed. Now, there can be uh, little wrinkles in the, the big plan. Uh, some people don't want to uh, to go along with being part of the, the, the borrowing that right. is going to be going through the strata, right. and they want to pay for it themselves. Right. So that does come up quite often, and certain lenders want every owner to take part in the loan and other lenders will allow a certain number to fund their own portion of the improvements. So we work with, with all lenders. So we would find the lender that we think would be the most suitable given the particular situation in front of us. So if we have a situation where half the owners have their own portion ready to be funded towards the capital upgrades, then essentially we're borrowing less financing uh, via a lender that allows that kind of a structure. So let's just say that for some re miracle I've had the extra $50,000 sitting around or I can borrow it at a, a much cheaper rate right. than going through, and, and I decide to go that way. Is that it? I'm done? I'm, my hands are washed of it? Just get the work done? Is that how it works? Right. So you would, you would uh, you know, pay up your portion when the time is right, and you and any other owners that want to pay their portion towards the, the upgrades. The balance must be borrowed because your portion alone does not meet the total capital cost. So we want to make sure that all the members or, or all the owners that pay towards the project plus financing total the total project cost. Mm -hmm. And so we would exclude you from, uh, from the borrowing as such, but via the Strata's obligation, you are still part of that overall obligation. Yeah, and that, that's the important thing for, for people to, to realize, just because they paid their portion of the loan uh, doesn't mean they're off the hook if if uh, others start to default. Right, they're yeah. not off the hook. They're not exactly. off the hook. The exactly. corporation. So the wording of the resolution is going to have to, um, you know, uh, people have to understand that the corporation is still borrowing. Maybe it's only half the amount that's required, but everyone as a whole is obligated uh, for that uh, repayment. And uh, though you may not have monthly payments towards it because you've paid your load up front, right? Um, you still down the road uh, may may have that obligation over your head. So. Right, absolutely. <coughs> so you're not excluded even though you pay your share, except your repayment goes towards your lender if you borrowed that mm -hmm. money yeah. and not to the assessment that the strata would have normally issued. And so the other good way to get around it is through the depreciation reports, okay. right? If you've been funding them. So, I mean, those corporations that were proactive and, and they've got the money now sitting aside in, in, uh, in the CRF, um, you know the approval process is much easier now. It's um, if it's identified in the CR or identified in the depreciation report as as a capital improvement or repair that needs to be done, then the money can come out of the CRF with only 50% resolution as opposed to a three quarter. So right. it's much easier now for corporations to move to move forward, and uh, you know they may identify something li like um, deck membranes. You know that that uh, look over to Dan there because he, he right. they do deck membranes, and I mean you guys have probably seen this sort of thing uh, before. We're and we're beginning to see more, uh, I mean, financing right up front is, is one of the most important things. Ali, you've identified, you know, that they need to figure out how their budgets are going to work, right? right? Um, but but money uh, money makes people emotional, mm. right? You know, we get all worked up about spending something, little or big. And, and so if you can get that part of the puzzle put in place before any size of project, uh, you know, whether it be a $100,000 painting project or a $10 million envelope restoration right. project, it, 
it's very valuable. And I, I think the, the change by the government to allow depreciation reports and, and CRF in concert to, to change the voting uh, guidelines so it's 50% plus one, what that does is gives those councils that are really trying to be proactive mm -hmm. and say, let's keep our building looking good. And they've gone ahead and they've got a depreciation report. Now they've identified in that, um, you know, as, as you say, uh, Dan, the, uh, the deck membranes are, are due this year, mm -hmm. right? They can go get those contracts bid on and, and come, to, come to a vote. And if they've got money in the CRF, just move ahead with that project. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you don't have all those stalls, right? Uh, you know, you're saying pay me now or pay me later, George, right? right? Well, you know, that's one of those stalls that all of a sudden you've got work that, that should have been done on those balcony membranes. Maybe it's covering somebody else's living quarters, right? All of a sudden now, two years later, it still hasn't been done. You've got leaks into those living areas and that kind of thing. Whereas a, a contractor like ourselves or someone else that does that work can go in and, and recoat those in a season and suddenly you've got your building protected again and your value stays up, right? You continue to see your property value and your realty value stay uh, higher as well. I, I don't know, you must see yeah. that a lot with the buy yeah, and sell. And it's, and it's uh, you know, where Ali would come in would be those big those big projects, but um, e even betterment and improvements, uh, lobby restorations are, are often identified, uh, you know, a modernization mm -hmm. are, are identified in the depreciation report and that's a good way to proceed. In it. You can sometimes wrap a couple of things together. So yep. you know, if you're if you're going to do the lobby, well, maybe you decide to do the lobby in the hallways. And since you're doing that, well, why don't we look at maybe LED lighting, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't we redo the tile in the front area? Why don't we get rid of the 1960s, you know, wood paneling down one of the hallways? And and so suddenly putting those together uh, and funding them well, you can you can make a project and suddenly uh, add literally tens of thousands of dollars to each unit's value. Mm -hmm. Well, when you talk about money and spending on improvements, uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, look, at I've spent a lot of money inside making my unit look really great. But the front door to yeah. that building yeah. is what, you know, a potential buyer mm -hmm. is going to look at. And it's like, holy cow, yeah. time has stood still here and it's got stains and stuff like that. So the importance of that. So that's the job, I guess, of the... The uh, the management company being a bit of a a salesman, proactive salesman. Uh, well, yeah, I mean it's it's people's homes, right? So they make mm. the decision. But uh, I'm I'm a big advocate for uh, spend the money on the common areas, and and you'll always be able to sell your unit. Mm -hmm. um, you could spend a lot of money fixing up your own suite, make it look super fantastic. But if it's the the lobby is super dated and old, people can't visualize themselves there. So you're much better off creating that uh, that uh, very appealing front entrance than mm -hmm. you are fixing up your own place perfectly yeah realtors talk about curb appeal yes and it, and it still is very valuable in fact even more so uh, you, you talked about if a building is stained or that kind of thing mm -hmm. i mean really one of the least expensive things to do is repaint a building and suddenly you've changed the color you've changed the look you've changed the era that it looks like it's from and it's uh, clean and neat you know pa painting uh painting dan when I, I just when you said that i just thought of hardy board mm. you can get buildings that are pre-stained hardy board and then, of course, hardy board that's painted. Is there any particular concerns or with the hardy board? Yeah, actually, uh, hardy is is taken over from our. We love our wood out here. We love <laughs> cedar, right? So, so anything that looks like cedar, we're happy to jump on. And 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 hardy is really just for those of you who don't know, it it, it it's a compressed kind of cementitious board. So it's got fibers and cement all pushed together, and they make a ton of stuff out of it. Now, not just uh, boards, but they make big panels out of it. They're oh, making shingles. Yeah, yeah. Look, you know, looks like uh, wood wood uh, shakes and that kind of thing. Uh, they paint really really well yeah and and uh, there's a couple of uh, dangers with them some of the older installations of them they tried to caulk every gap on them that was the uh, engineering at that point that's changed mm. and opened that up but uh, as long as they're well coated uh, then they they'll, they'll stand up for, uh, almost like concrete uh, much longer than the natural wood if they've been installed well mm. yeah yeah so they do come pre painted yep, typically those, yeah. a lot of times they'll arrive at the site pre-painted and then the uh the the foreman uh will get a contractor to put one last coat on when it's up in place or uh, some of them will even be just applied and touched up and you'll see these little touch-up pens that they have uh you know it's almost like when you touch up your car from getting uh scratched they'll do that on site and my too. son had a couple of those pens you know <laughs> yeah there you go yeah <laughs> was he touching up or was he yeah. scratching yeah. up yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh just, uh, I want to come back to maybe some of the, the the newer products that interest me. The the, the evolution of technology and and uh, the products that can, uh, can be used on a on a strata. But Dan, just back to the point about getting the go ahead mm. uh, on a project, needing you know 
with uh, the depreciation report saying this has got to be done, then you can move ahead with 50% plus one. Is this very important in buildings where you have a lot of non-resident, uh, where, where the owners are not residents of the building, they may be offshore, they may, may be just holding this an investment and they don't really care. Uh, has this been a stumbling block in the past? Uh, sure, it has been a stumbling block in the past, and I think that the change in the act is recognizing that. So if it's uh, you know just approvals to get the the uh, depreciation report is is easier, the funding of it is easier, um, and the depreciation report will always come with a couple of options of how you fund it, whether it's an uh, interval with with special levies or whether it's a straight line uh, funding uh, each and every month. So the corporation can pick what what uh, suits the ownership the best. But, um, uh, I mean, we as an industry certainly embrace the depreciation reports, and um, uh, I think there's a very valuable role for them, and the financing is for, you know, super projects. And I think you probably, Ali probably sees a lot of envelope stuff with, uh, right. with, with that, but right. not so much the general maintenance things. Yeah. yeah. So Dan Schmidt from Remdahl, what other, what other things are now out there? You know, when a strat is being told, well, we have this big kind of project, uh, uh, are there, there there paints that make you know whole buildings brighter? Are there what other the other products that you're you're seeing coming online that are very valuable for the future of a uh, strata? Well, probably one of the biggest changes in the paint industry for us, at least, was was the change in uh, VOC guidelines. VOCs are volatile organic compounds, and so the old oil-based paints. Uh, are really gone off the marketplace. They're, they're just a minor use in the industrial, but that's about it. And so they've had to be replaced by new acrylic paints. And that technology, though, that, that resistance to solvents um, is wonderful for our industry. Uh, what it does is one thing, it makes my employees that much healthier when mm -hmm. they're working with products. Uh, secondly, it makes all the people that are living in their homes that much happier because we're not using smelly paints around mm -hmm. them, right? And, and frankly, it's good for our kids because it makes our environment that much uh, more more healthy as well. And we're seeing that technology now make its way into other products. So you're talking about new products. So paints was the first of that, but that's really almost five or six years old that it, that it began. Now we're seeing things like caulking that used to be solvent, mm. you know, in it to cure it and so on. Now they're figuring out how to do that without the solvents. Uh, things like membrane coatings and stuff going to different solid levels so that epoxy coating stuff that you could never used to get in any way except with lots of solvents you know things you wore big respirators and masks and you know took all the all the people out of the hallways yeah. and put fans <laughs> in the hallways yeah. and so on Ooh, you, Aunt yeah, exactly now now you can do those kind of things in in living areas we we sampled a new uh, product just recently on some uh, stairwells in a, in a common area hallway uh, going down the stair with the uh, safety stairwells out and uh, it had an epoxy on the floor. We put an acrylic on top of that, and it was dry and smell-free in about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, very, very simple application and very, very durable. It stood up really well. And so that's the kind of thing we're seeing. Just that uh, that new technology is moving into a variety of the areas in the industry. Right. So I would I would think after financing a project, these would be important questions for the uh, the property managers too. Oh yeah. Product uh, time frames, uh, the deliverables are, are critical, and, 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 and durability really, yeah. right? Like when someone's going to spend a lot of money on a building, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they they don't want to be back doing that same thing, yeah. uh, two or three years later. They want to be able to get five or six or mm -hmm. ten or twelve years out of it. And if I can do it now and pay all that money and get eight years, or I can pay it maybe a little bit more and get ten or twelve years, well, there's good value in that. And that often comes down to who's doing the work and what products are using. You're listening to Strata Life on Sale 650. I'm George Gordon. We're going to be back and go to the mailbag, get some of the questions in from the people who uh, listen to the show on a regular basis and some concerns. Uh, we'll get answers from our experts uh, right here. You can get more information at strata.life. And this show will be available for you in podcast form on the uh, CIL 650 website, CIL. 650.ca. I'm George Gordon. Gee. <laughs> Fix. <laughs> All right. Thanks, buddy. Well, what? I got one down what? anyway. What? what does the end of his sentence sound like Dwayne's voice? Yeah. <laughs> God, my head's still in Tucson. This is Experts on Call on CIL 650.